when the Buddha first explained the Four Noble Truths, he also explained that each truth had a duty. Suffering was to be comprehended, its cause abandoned. Cessation was to be realized and the path was to be developed. At another point in his career he explained comprehension a little bit further. He said you comprehend suffering to the point of dispassion. That's what it means to comprehend it. You develop dispassion for it. it sounds strange, dispassion for suffering. We don't think we are passionate about suffering, but as he pointed out, we suffer because of five clinging aggregates, and there's passion right there in the clinging. We cling to our body, our form, our sense of the body felt from the inside, and other forms we see outside. We cling to our feelings, our perceptions, our thought fabrications, our consciousness. It's because we cling to these things that we suffer. That is what suffering is. And we're passionate about it. And so we comprehend these things means that we understand them to the point where we realize they're really not worth the passion that goes into them. And that's how suffering ends. But this doesn't mean that we sit around just trying to be dispassionate about everything all, all at once. After all, there are four truths and there are other duties we have. The duty to practice, the duty to develop the path. And that requires a certain amount of passion. You have to learn how to motivate yourself to do this. And in every case, our motivation may not be pure when we begin, we begin but as we become more and more self-observant, as concentration gets stronger and our discernment gets more precise, we begin to see that there are things we're holding on to that are causing us to suffer, and if we don't let them go, there's going to be problems. Again, there th what that means is there are things associated with the path that we begin to realize don't have to be there. We're carrying extra suffering into the path we don't need to. In fact, that's what a lot of the path is. It's like going on a trip and deciding that you're going to take lots and lots of luggage to make sure that every possibility is taken care of. And then, of course, lugging all that luggage around becomes a real burden. So you have to learn how to stop and take things out of the luggage, and sometimes you have to throw whole trunks away. But the path is part of a process of stripping things down. That's the scary part sometimes. We look at the path and say, I'm going to have to give up this, I'm going to have to give up that, and gee, I don't think I'll be able to do that, and maybe i go back and do something else better. We're not asked to give anything up until you see that it's suffering. You develop some dispassion for it, and you realize that you don't really need it. A lot of our suffering comes from seeing things that we think we need and we can't live without. But when you develop the path, you provide yourself with what could be called an alternative source of food, an alternative nourishment. There's a sense of well-being that comes when you can look at your actions and see that you haven't harmed anybody. A sense of well-being that comes from getting the mind to settle down and be still. The well-being that comes when you begin to discern things in the mind that are really unnecessary, you can drop them. That's a sense of lightness. It's like instead of having a whole set of cutlery and a whole box of tools, that you learn that you've got one tool that you're really skillful at and you can use it in all sorts of different ways. So you want to be passionate about the path and learn how to motivate yourself in whatever way you find helps get you on the path. The Buddha recommends, first of all, being heedful, realizing that if you don't develop good qualities of the mind, there's going to be a lot of extra suffering down the line. 
one of the reasons why the Buddha has you contemplate aging, illness, and death, that these things are lying ahead of you. As with aging, you look at your body and say, I don't see what in here is going to age. It seems to be going perfectly fine. And then it just does it. What's actually happening is that the body has been aging all along, simply that its repair powers have been good. But as you get older, those repair powers begin to break down. Things don't get repaired as well as they used to. And bit by bit by bit, they go. You may have seen that picture online where they take a picture of a young woman, and they take comparative pictures of other members of her family over time to see how they age, and they can figure out how she's going to age, and you watch it. At first, nothing seems to be happening. Slight, slight, slight changes happen, but they're very slow. And then as you get toward the end, the changes get faster and faster and faster, as things break down more quickly. Well, this lies in wait for all of us. And there's illness. Every part of the body has illnesses associated with it. And of course, death. The fact that you're born means there's going to be death. And you have to ask yourself, are you ready for these things? When the body starts breaking down, are you going to suffer or are you not going to suffer? Well, you can ch change things or you can change the qualities of your mind, develop good qualities in the mind. That will enable you not to suffer. That's one of the rewards of the path. That's one way of motivating yourself, to get a sense of enthusiasm for the path. That this is the one way out, the one way that's going to keep you from suffering from these inevitable things. Another motivation is compassion. One, compassion for yourself. Two, compassion for others. The more you're able to take care of your quality of the mind, the less burden you'll be on others. You've probably seen this. You know, people, as they get old and sick, start thrashing around. And either get really nasty to the people around them or just start bemoaning their fate. All of which makes things more difficult for the people looking after them. Whereas if you're in control, so the, the mind doesn't get upset with the changes in the body. And that's a gift to other people. There's a sense of pride that comes with mastering the path. This is a healthy sense of pride. Most of us are concerned with the pride that comes of lording it over other people, seeing that we're better than they are. This is not a matter of being better than anybody else. This is a matter of learning to master your own mind. So whatever emotion you find is helpful to motivate you, it's part of the path. That may be part of the luggage that you're carrying right now that you're going to be able to drop at some point. But remember, we're not just sitting here trying to be dispassionate. We're trying to figure out which things are helpful and we'll have a passion for them. As the Buddha said, you try to delight in developing skillful qualities and to delight in abandoning unskillful ones. Well, delight, of course, is something that you're going to put aside eventually. But for right now, it may be part of the luggage you need, so carry it with you. The path is something you have to fabricate, and fabrication comes from passion. And so look at right view and right resolve and all the other factors of the path as things you want to get passionate about. You want to do these things really well. Because what do we have as human beings? We've got this life. And as the Buddha pointed out, there are two kinds of searches. There's the search that's noble and there's the search that's not noble. The not noble search is looking for happiness and other things that are going to age, grow ill, and die. 
which means you spend all your life working, 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 trying to get something, and then it just slips out of your fingers. You die, they die. That kind of life leaves nothing behind. The noble search is one that looks for something that doesn't age, doesn't grow ill, doesn't die. Because even though you're going to lose this body and lose all the qualities of your mind, but except for that one thing that doesn't die, that you're going to lose the things you're going to lose anyhow. But if you get this, that makes all the difference in the world. The Buddha talks about cessation as part of the attainment. It's interesting, cessation, attainment. What it means is greed, aversion, and delusion cease. Your passion for fabrication at that point ceases because it's done the work it needs to do. But that doesn't mean there's nothing left. There is the awareness of awakening. And when you hit it, you realize it really is the end of suffering. At that point, you've thrown away all your baggage. But you've got something a lot more valuable that you don't have to lug around. It's just there. So take what you need for the journey. And if you find that things are getting a little heavy, ask yourself, what are you holding on to that's weighing you down? And it's your, in your best interest to let that go. Learn to develop some dispassion for those things. They may be old things that you feel nostalgia for, old things that you feel that you can't imagine how you could live without them. But if they're weighing you down, they're unnecessary, because the mind doesn't need to be weighed down. That's something that's hard for us to think about. We tend to have a sense that our minds carry a weight. We don't know what it would be like not to have that weight, but the Buddha said it is possible. One of the images of the arhats is that they're like birds that fly, with nothing to weigh them down at all. <laughs>